Hello, my name is Derek Bundy and I'm a Student Involvement Advisor in the Center for Leadership and Involvement. Today I'm here to take you through Module 1 of Online RSO Training, which covers RSO Basics. To get started, let's discuss your benefits and responsibilities of being an RSO. As an RSO, you have a number of benefits. Some of these benefits include a blueprint page for your RSO, the ability to hold events on campus, free or reduced cost access to many university facilities, eligibility for student fee funding through student government and access to the student organization catering fund, a University of Chicago financial account, and use of the university's tax exemption. These benefits come with some responsibilities. You have a number of community responsibilities. As an RSO, your organization holds a very visible and often powerful position in the campus community. The university expects you to use this platform thoughtfully and to be respectful of fellow students, other departments, programs, organizations, the university community at large, and the university's world-class reputation. RSOs may not discriminate against potential members on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, national or ethnic origin, age, disability, or other factors irrelevant to participation in the programs of the university. Lastly, RSOs are required to comply with all university policies, including those listed on the Student Activities website and the full contents of the student manual. It is your responsibility as an RSO leader to be familiar with all policies and to ensure that your organization is in compliance. In addition to these community responsibilities, you do have some administrative responsibilities. These include annual registration and training, keeping your contact information current at all times in Blueprint, and fiscal responsibility. Let's move on and talk about the advising model and who your advisor is. In the fall of 2013, we launched a needs-based advising model. Your RSO falls into one of the five categories shown here and is associated with the color that is shown above. The designations of color are not a hierarchy, nor are they intended to serve as a ladder for how your RSO is supposed to climb. Your categorization, rather, is able to help advisors understand how to best support you and what kind of training to provide for you. Your designation is not used to confer status, nor does it define access to resources. You may be wondering, how do I determine what my RSO category is? You may find this information in Blueprint. Log into Blueprint at blueprint.uchicago.edu. From there, Search for and enter your RSO's portal. Once you've entered the portal, on the left side toolbar, click Profile. You'll see under the Additional Information heading that your advising model categorization is listed. You may be wondering, who, what are the different advisor types associated with the advising model? There are a number of different advisors, including RSO advisors. These are professional staff from the Center for Leadership and Involvement, UCSC, or Athletics. They advise green, blue, and purple RSOs. Additionally, we have peer advisors. Peer advisors are experienced student leaders trained by the Center for Leadership and Involvement, and they advise orange RSOs. Many of your RSOs have a faculty or staff member outside of campus and student life that serves as, a, as an advisor for your group. Faculty and staff advisors are wonderful, wonderful for helping determine content for your organization and connecting you in to other things that may have to do with the specialization area of your RSO. Lastly, some of you may have off-campus advisors from a national headquarters or organization. This is perfectly fine. Make sure that you keep them in the loop and that they're aware of university policies and how to relate to your RSO or peer advisor when necessary. You may be wondering, who is your advisor? 
If you're completing this training, you are an Orange RSO, and as an Orange RSO, you'll be working closely with the Peer Advising Team. They hold regular office hours in the RSO Advising Center, which is located in the lower level of the Reynolds Club. In addition to these regular office hours, the Peer Advisors are also available via email and chat at uchicagopeeradvisors at gmail.com. Now that you know who your advisor is, let's discuss some of the resources available to you. Number one, Blueprint. Blueprint is your organization's online portal and way to connect with the Center for Leadership and Involvement. Blueprint allows for increased visibility of your organization and allows you to be searchable. It is a place where you can create and load events and advertise them, including on the virtual flyer board. You may maintain your roster and manage your members, including leadership positions, and you may hold elections within your portal. Additionally, there are some communication tools that allow you to communicate internally to your group. Arguably, the most important feature of Blueprint is Blueprint Finance. This is where you will access your financial account to determine what your finances are, what sort of funding you've received, and be able to spend your finances through a purchase request. Also, there is electronic file storage available, which we strongly recommend as a way to archive your documents and organization from year to year. There are some other electronic resources available to you, including web pages. If you request a web page at studentactivities.uchicago.edu slash computing, a Center for Leadership and Involvement staff member will help to connect you with IT to get your page up and running. Additionally, there are electronic mailing lists, otherwise known as list hosts. To access an existing list host or to create a new one, visit lists.uchicago.edu. There is also the Student Events Calendar, which is a great supplement to Blueprint. Visit stuff.uchicago.edu to add your events to the calendar. As an RSO leader, you also can apply for 24-hour access to the Reynolds Club and the lower level where the Student Activity Center is located. Your primary contact and blueprint will need to submit all requests on behalf of your organization, and each individual that is requesting access needs to be listed in the blueprint roster for that organization. To access this request form, follow the link in the Dig Deeper section of this module. Many of you may be wondering if offices and storage are available to your RSO. RSOs can apply for storage or office space in the Reynolds Club or Ida Noyes Hall. However, space is very limited and applications are only accepted on an annual basis. Office and storage applications are a part of the annual registration process in the spring quarter. Speaking of the Student Activity Center and space, Let's talk about what's available to you in the Student Activity Center. We are located on the lower level of the Reynolds Club in room RC001, and we are managed by full-time staff and staffed by a group of students. Remember, you can request 24-hour access to this space by visiting the link available in the Dig Deeper section of this module. We are open and staffed Monday through, th through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are home to a number of key resources for your RSO, including mailboxes and package receiving, advertising and banner making supplies, audio visual equipment including a digital camera and walkie talkies, paper goods such as plates, cups, napkins, and plasticware, a button maker, an RSO computer lab that has both Mac and PC computers. Several of the computers are also equipped with the Adobe Creative Suite. We also have photocopiers and printers for your RSO's copying needs and a fax machine. Should you have questions or need any help accessing these resources, please come visit us and a student staff member would be happy to assist you. The last resource is the RSO newsletter. The newsletter is distributed monthly with occasional special issues in between. The newsletter is distributed automatically to RSO primary contacts, presidents, and treasurers 
and any member of your RSO can opt to receive the newsletter by signing up for our, the RSO newsletter list host at lists.uchicago.edu. The newsletter is home to updates and deadlines that are going to be important for your RSO, so please read it when you receive it. The last section of this module is going to be about maintaining your RSO status. We had mentioned some administrative responsibilities earlier in the module. One of them is completing required training. Training is required to maintain your RSO status and is based on your category in the RSO advising model. Orange RSOs are required to have leaders complete an online training in lieu of attendance at an in-person training session. The president and treasurer of each green, blue, and purple RSO will be required to attend an in-person training session during the second week of fall quarter. A frequently asked question we received is, what if I am the officer in more than one RSO? It's a good question. If you represent more than one RSO, you will need to attend the training that best suits the RSO in the most advanced version of the advising model. For example, if you represent both a purple and an orange group, you would need to attend an in-person training. This in-person training would cover your training requirement for both purple and orange, and you would not need to complete online training for your orange group. However, if you completed the online training, it would count for your orange group, but not for your purple group. If you have questions, ask your advisor. The final major requirement in maintaining your RSO status from year to year is annual registration. In the spring quarter of each year, your RSO is required to re-register in Blueprint and share pertinent information about the upcoming year with the Center for Leadership and Involvement. The individual that completes the registration will become the new primary contact in Blueprint and has a responsibility to update your roster and make changes to bylaws when necessary. This is also where you will apply for offices and storage, apply for usage of Mandel Hall, and more. Keep your eyes on the RSO newsletter to find out the dates for registration each year. You have now reached the end of training module one. Please complete the quiz and then move on to module two, which is linked in the dig deeper section.